2018 Mini Hatchback Review. The good points of Mini Hatchback. Great fun to push. Quality interior. Efficient, punchy engines. Lots of character. The bad points of Mini Hatchback. Expensive to acquire. Expensive options. Cramped rear seats. Firm ride on some models. Since it absolutely was launched in 2001, BMW's interpretation on the original Mini has become an overwhelmingly successful car, blending retro looks with upmarket appeal and also a fun image. It's all resulted in creating the Mini hatch you can purchase today. The latest model includes even more premium features due to various parts nicked from BMW, but it really has retained its sense of character to take on premium rivals just like the Audi A1, Alfa Romeo Mi 2, DS3 and equally quirky Fiat 500, but regular super minis such as VW Polo, Cita Visa and Mazda 2. Larger yet still mini. Bigger at landed divorce attorney's external direction versus the car it replaced, the three-door hatch has spawned a multitude of models, including a practical five-door version and also the mini convertible. At 3,821 mm long, it's 98 mm longer the Cooper S is 3,850 mm long, 44 mm wider and 7 mm taller compared to the old car. Overall interior space is a bit more generous than before, but don't go thinking you'll be fitting tall adults within the back unless the children are driving. Despite the improved size, it's still recognizably mini which has a familiar fit around the grille, headlights, floating roof and rear lights, although those are a lot easier wider than previous incarnations. In fact, there's no chance you'll mistake it for everything else as being the 2018 revisions created to the car will include a set of Union Jack-style rear LED lights. If anything it's sportier in profile, the roof line tapers more aggressively towards rear, but altogether it's fresh and modern. BM arrived technology. Inside, Mini has built an interior that's interesting to see with plenty of design cues that hark to the original car, but housing plenty of modern technology that you'd expect you'll see in much larger more costly cars as a result of its parent company BMW. The central instrument binnacle will no longer contains the speedometer instead the infotainment systems details using the speedo located behind the tire next for the rev counter. A number of screen sizes can be obtained depending for the spec from the car, operating a more fun looking version of BMW's slick iDrive infotainment system. The central display is flanked by an LED ring which illuminates differently determined by your preferences. It can become a fuel gauge, it changes for the way close you happen to be to something when parking, or you can allow it do its very own thing and scroll from a variety of vivid colors. 5-door version available. For the first time, a 5-door 4 doors along with a hatchback tailgate version from the mini hatch has become made available. Previously that it was 3-door only. You get the identical choice of engines and equipment grades whether you select a 3 or 5 door car, giving buyers much more choice as long as they need to drop more practicality. Don't go thinking it's some sort of family wagon, it's still smaller inside than super mini rivals such because Volkswagen Polo, along with the boot is smaller as opposed to runners of its competitors, too. Still, in case you only need a corner seat for occasional use. It lets you do make a lots of sense as being a slightly more usable version in the regular hatch. Efficient, turbocharged engines. Three tiers of mininess can be obtained, one, Cooper and Cooper S, available which has a range of turbocharged petrol and diesel engines, aforementioned identified having a D suffix. The entry-level Petro Mini 1 is powered by the 1.5-liter 3-cylinder engine back in the day a 1.2 with 102 horsepower. Move for the Cooper and Cooper D versions, which Mini says be the cause of the majority of sales, plus the 3-cylinder motors will also be of 1.5-liter capacity. The Cooper produces 136 horsepower, the Cooper D 116 horsepower. Topping the product range is the 4-cylinder. 2.0-liter petrol Cooper S offering significantly greater performance with 192 horsepower, 
giving a sprint to 62 miles per hour period of 6.8 seconds. There's additionally a Mini Cooper S Works 210 which, since you may have guessed, ups capability to 210 horsepower. An automatic transmission can be obtained, 7-speed dual clutch on some plus much more traditional 8-speed auto on others, and all of Mini hatches come that has a 6-speed manual transmission as standard. Mini John Cooper Works Taking a normal Mini Cooper S a step further may be the Mini John Cooper Works JCW. It pushes out 231 horsepower and it is capable of sprinting from 062 miles per hour within 6.3 seconds, and is also differentiated off their Mini models with several red exterior accents and model specific trimmings inside for that seats and decorative elements. Facelift for 2018 January 2018 saw the arrival of your subtle facelift for that Mini. The engine range was tweaked using the one's 1 1.2 liter dropped in favor of any larger 1.5 liter turbo producing 103 horsepower. A new 7 speed DCT dual clutch transmission replaced that old 8 speed unit in most engines, too. Although the entire shape and design remained unchanged, it received changes towards the interior along with revised front and back lights. All cars came designed with LED headlights as standard with all the option to step up to dazzle-free matrix LED ones. The rear lights were updated to your TWI Union Jack design, which are designed to divide opinions. Other highlights on the 2018 Minis are the Euro's customized scheme, that permits the owner to get personalized 3D printed inserts to the dashboard and door sills along with unique graphics for the auto's puddle lights. Apple CarPlay and also a concierge service were added as options to your infotainment system. Latest Deals from Buayacar Mini Hatchback Special Edition 2 19,232 pounds or 289 pounds a month Mini Hatchback 2.0 John Cooper W 22,653 pounds or 339 pounds every month. See all deals on Mini Hatchback. Representative example, representative APR of 7.9% borrowing 10,509 pounds over 48 months on HP Type Finance. The exact amount payable could be 250 pounds monthly, having a total cost of credit of 1,483 pounds as well as a total amount payable of 11,992 pounds. Dennis Buaya Car Limited, 3132 Alfred Place, London, WC1E7DPGB0915105858 is really a credit broker regulated by FCA FRN 667368. The Verdict The Mini Hatches Character, with the instantly recognizable look and shape. It's also great fun to push, carries a tech heavy quality interior and incorporates a strong choice of engines, so all forms of buyer is catered for. The availability of an 5-door model boosts practicality somewhat, although it's still a dinky super mini. Mini hatch review. Wide variety of engines. Choice of petrol and diesel. All turbocharged. Buyers are spoiled for choice in selecting a mini. Power is provided by the selection of turbocharged petrol and diesel engines, in the easy to understand lineup. Petrol engine range. Choose entry level Mini 1 and power comes from a 1 hour.5 liter 3 cylinder engine with 102 horsepower and 190 newton meters of torque, which is available from 1350 revolutions per minute. It's a sprightly performer topping 121 miles per hour and reaching 62 miles per hour in 10.1 seconds. Efficiency isn't compromised though, which has a claimed average fuel utilization of 57.6 miles per gallon and CO2 emissions of 111 GKM. Opt for that Cooper, featuring its 136 horsepower 1.5 liter 3 cylinder motor and you'll locate a capable, sporty performer. With 220 newton meters of torque from just 1,250 revolutions per minute, it'll sprint from 062 miles per hour in only 7.9 seconds before you go on to a high speed of 130 miles per hour. It's only slightly less efficient compared to the 1, 
with claims of 56.5 miles per gallon and CO2 emissions of 114 GKM. Topping the petrol range may be the four-cylinder, 2.0-liter Cooper S packing 192 horsepower and 280 newton meters at 1,250 revolutions per minute into a small car is usually going to create rapid results, accelerating from 062 miles per hour in 6.8 seconds before achieving a premier speed of 146 miles per hour confirms this, and it also feels eager while traveling too. Positively, efficiency doesn't suffer chronically inside process, many claiming the Cooper S will achieve 47.1 miles per gallon with emissions of 138 GKM. Stepping up on the Cooper S works 210 bumps power approximately 210 horsepower, and torque is rated at 300 newton meters. The 062 miles per hour time falls in order to 6.3 seconds likewise. Diesel derivatives. The mini diesel lineup only incorporates one model now, previously consisting of three before the vehicle's facelift. The 1.5 liter Cooper D is really a refined and flexible power plant delivering 116 horsepower and 270 newton meters of torque at 1,750 revolutions per minute, meaning it'll complete the 062 miles per hour test in 9.2 seconds that has a top speed of 127 miles per hour. Despite this down-to-earth pace, many claims the Cooper D will still achieve 80.7 miles per gallon with CO2 emissions of just 102 GKM. All minis are fitted as standard that has a 6-speed manual gearbox with cars will also get an automatic throttle blipping serve as standard. Mini DCT Dual Clutch Gearbox A 7-speed dual clutch automatic transmission is elective on the 1, Cooper, Cooper S and Cooper D. A sports automatic version of this is accessible on the Cooper S, which adds paddle shifters on the leader. Pick a Cooper SD having an automatic gearbox also it'll be an 8-speed transmission, not really a dual clutch just like the other models, however a sports version is suggested to add paddles, too. We tested it paired while using 1.5 liter Cooper D engine also it feels a slick and responsive transmission. It moves up with the gears very smoothly indeed, with almost no jerkiness being sent through the vehicle like you'd sometimes experience with one on the VW Group's DSG units. Plant your foot also it can try taking some while to reply although that may be down to your way the Cooper D responds, shifting down quite slowly but very smoothly. This bearing isn't that you be rushed, but in case you're after the relaxed auto, it's excellent indeed. Manual control could be taken with the new gear levers such as one you'll find over a BMW where it stays within the same central position, nudging it back and change up and nudging it forwards to vary down. Again, it's not the fastest to react, but gear changes are really smooth. It never feels jerky or flustered, helping to make for a progressive driving experience. There were no leader mounted paddles on the automobile we tested there saved to the sports automatic version which often can have made it a far more involving car on twistier parts of road. But most people buying an automated will be you need to be letting the vehicle do a unique thing, so there's little to complain about here. Driving modes have become selected using a toggle for the center console nearby the engine starter button instead of on the ring about the transmission, that flick between sport, mid and eco. The gearbox responds faster in sport mode you may expect yet not dramatically so. It holds on to gears just a little longer when you want to make speedier progress, though the gearbox itself remains slick. Mini John Cooper Works Topping everything off would be the John Cooper Works JCW. It features exactly the same 2.0-liter turbo because the regular Cooper S, nevertheless it's tuned to provide 231 horsepower, meaning it's 062 miles per hour falls in order to 6.3 seconds, making for the real little pocket rocket. Top speed is 153 miles per hour, engines will no longer available. The entry-level Mini 1 once was powered with a 1.2-liter three-cylinder engine with 102 horsepower and 180 newton meters of torque made available from 1,400 revolutions per minute. It's a sprightly performer. 
topping 121 miles per hour and reaching 62 miles per hour in 9.9 .9 seconds. Efficiency isn't compromised though, using a claimed average fuel utilization of 61.4 miles per gallon and CO2 emissions of 108 GKM. The 1D doesn't show on new price lists, nevertheless, you can get a preface lift example. It is included with 95 horsepower but an effective 220 newton meters of torque from 1750 revolutions per minute. The 1.2 liter 1D could be the slowest but a majority efficient member with the mini hatch range. Although an 11.2 second 062 miles per hour time sounds a bit pedestrian, it's very likely to suit many and it is 118 miles per hour top speed is basically academic anyway. What impresses more could be the 1D's claim of 83.1 miles per gallon and CO2 emissions of 99 GKM. And in the top with the range was once the Cooper SD, a 2.0 liter turbocharged diesel producing 170 horsepower and 360 newton meters of torque. It's almost as quick since the Petrol Cooper S, sprinting from 062 miles per hour in 7.2 seconds and can continue on to achieve 141 miles per hour, still great fun drive an automobile. Manages for being comfortable, too. Steering is sharp and responsive. A significant selling feature for the auto is how well the mini hatch handles in comparison with both the competition plus the model it replaced. Despite being fun to push, there's no escaping the actual fact it's also mature with greater proof comfort and refinement than previous iterations. It's so good, just different. More grown-up feel, but nevertheless fun. Part with the reason would be the Mini's expanded size. As well to be a 28mm stretch from the wheelbase, the tracks the width relating to the wheels on either side from the car were also increased by 42mm in the front and 34mm at the trunk. Consequently it feels stable, especially on motorway jaunts. The suspension setup promotes both agility and responsiveness. It's nimble and accurate, yet incredibly refined. The ride comfort, especially on smaller wheels is compliant. During your larger rims around 18 inches it's noticeably firmer without feeling enjoy it crashes over every bump and undulation. Drive the Cooper S and others sensations are amplified further, it's noticeably firmer compared to mid-spec Cooper however feels like an increased, better engineered sports hatchback rather than light and chuckable mini of old. Some may lament the steering though. It's sharp and accurate so when switching from the traction control. The Mini remains very precise to use cornering, gripping with impressive tenacity. But although steering weights up progressively, it's less communicative as enthusiastic drivers may in answer to. These everything is relative certainly, the Mini hatch's steering is impressively engineered and it also puts several sporty hatchbacks to shame, however it's genuine that others provide a greater degree of feel. Drive-in modes. With a twinge of self-deprecating humor. The optional adjustable driving modes make reference towards the Mini's fabled go-kart-like agility. Three modes are offered, green, which promotes fuel efficiency and encourages early up changes, mid that is your everyday selection and sport for and quoting the display itself maximum go-kart feel. There's a visible change between your settings too, sport providing decidedly more fun compared to other settings. Quirky look on the interior. Strong construction throughout. Excellent, low driving position. At first glance the Mini's interior looks fairly much like previous models but look closer and prod and poke the type of material and you'll appreciate what amount it's advanced through the years. Not only it is possible to high level of fit and take care of with nice materials, the inner's ergonomically sound too. Window switches have moved through the lower console toggles up to your doors themselves, as an illustration that produces a huge difference whenever you quickly need to adjust something. The toggles haven't disappeared though yet still house the switches for your traction control system, automatic stop start and delightfully retro starter button, finished in the deep red hue that pulses with light after you get into your vehicle. What's missing will be the central speedometer. Purists might lament its demise but let's not forget the first Mini started having a central speedometer phased out in 1969. 
Now, it sits in a bit pod behind the controls, and yes it's easier to watch. It's flanked by the semicircular rev counter for the left and also a fuel gauge around the right. There remains to be a circular display from the center on the dash for that infotainment watch house, framed by way of a multicolored LED ring. The display itself ranges from the four-line digital display rolling around in its basic form, all the way as much as an 8.8-inch full-color LCD screen with Satanov. It's controlled by two different versions of Mini's interpretation of BMW's iDrive rotary controller. It's intuitive to work with, but feels low to down behind kit lever. That LED frame glows different colors determined by various functions or selected programs too. For example, where parking sensors are fitted the ring changes from green, to amber, to red according to your proximity for an obstacle. Alter the temperature from the climate control and also the ring changes from blue to red based on whether it's getting cooler or warmer. Or when you prefer, it could scroll through various colors along while using rest in the car's ambient lights. Firm, yet compliant tried quality. Seats are snug and supportive. Great on short or longer journeys. It may appear surprising for any small car that has a sporty focus. Nevertheless the Mini is in reality a remarkably comfortable car to push you and be in. Taking advantage in the expanded exterior dimensions, the inside is larger than before too, but only those within the front will notice any real difference. The seats are larger, lower set plus much more comfortable, including the Cooper S's sports items feel supportive after having a long journey. The seats also give you a great selection of adjustment slide and tilt with no trouble to allow better access to your back and when you're willing to spend extra as much many customers do they might be heated and trimmed in leather too. Climb into the back from the three-door model and you'll begin to see the previous Mini's weakness has barely been addressed, it's really only comfortable for the kids and adults who happen to become contortionists. That's partly due to rear headroom being marginally reduced as a result of the tapering roofline. There's a little more space within the five-door though, due to its longer wheelbase. In the three-door model the trunk seat is shaped for two only that has a raised bolster within the middle with the seat base with no middle seat belt though the five-door is technically a five-seater, if you're slightly cramped one. Not only would be the mini quiet inside, the lighter and revised suspension actually causes it to become a comfortable companion on longer commutes too. Forget the bounciness of previous minis, the hatch feels planted and compliant once you need it to become. Mood lighting is usually a feature carried over through the previous model and it is complemented with the multicolored LED ring about the central instrument display. Its color varies dependent upon a volume of functions, however it can pulsate in relation for the beat on the music being played for instance. It matches on top of ambient lighting about the rest in the car. Illuminating the entranceway bins, door handles and front part on the cabin. With an apparent increase in quality, overall refinement is impressive, making the Mini a good place in which to search. With a raft of driving aids, the worries of driving is usually minimized, just tick the appropriate option boxes to specify yours with adaptive cruise control and an automated parallel parking system. Trim structure isn't too tricky to know. A great deal of equipment is available in packs or extras. Make sure guess what happens you're getting. Three basic degrees of mininess can be purchased. 1. Cooper and Cooper S. By having diesel versions. However, these are more around the engines as opposed to kit. A lot from the gadgets and toys available come in whichever packs you decide on for your mini, but here's what each model includes. Standard mini hatch equipment. Opt for your Mini 1 and also your hatch includes 15-inch steel wheels Keyless ignition Fog lights Trip computer Electric windows and door mirrors Aircon 6.5-inch infotainment screen with DAB radio Bluetooth phone connectivity USB and auxin slots LED lights back and front A standard Cooper doesn't actually consist of much more equipment Nevertheless it does have a rather different look with body colored door mirrors different grille design with chrome slats 15 inch alloy wheels range topping Cooper's advantages from additional chrome work for the exterior 
more aggressive grills filled that has a black mesh design, a bonnet scoop, centrally mounted twin exhaust pipes, sports front seats as well as a three-spoke sports tire. Optional mini hatch accessories. Personalization continues to be a mini hallmark for the long time and also the new hatch range isn't an exception. White and black roofs are simply the start having a plethora of body graphics and roof decals to generate your mini your own for the outside. The right off the bat you should do if getting a new mini is usually to spec the chili pack. It's not cheap, but adds a sizable number of equipment to your vehicle, including 17-inch alloy wheels on Cooper and Cooper S. Multifunction sports tire. Sports seats with height adjustment for passenger together with driver. Extra storage during the entire cabin. Mini driving modes. Automatic lights and wipers. Dual zone climate control. Ambient interior lighting. Upgraded seat upholstery. There's also the pepper pack, which is sold with a smaller quantity of these items on the cheap. Nonetheless it's worth going to the chili the way it's additional desirable. A John Cooper Works Chili Pack is usually available, which include all in the above and adds a JCW body kit to regular models. Another tempting option are going to be the Mini Navigation Plus Pack, which unfortunately comes packed having an upgraded Satan of system with online services, enhanced Bluetooth and central alarm rest inside the front, Apple CarPlay and wireless phone charging. There's fashionable driving assistant pack which bundles together a raft of safety systems, including high beam assist, rear and collision warning and traffic sign recognition. If you like, it is possible to dive in the options list and specify things individually in lieu of as part of your pack. Highlights include leather upholstery, a panoramic sunroof, keyless entry, a self-parking system, seat heating and adaptive cruise control, among additional. 4 stars for mini hatch. Extra safety kit available. Good for any small car. When tested by your own cap, the mini was awarded 4 stars, just missing out around the full 5. 3 ice fix child seat mounting points are within the mini, 2 within the back seat and 1 for the front passenger seat, rogues of which automatically disconnects the airbag. 6 airbags, including front, side and curtain. Complement the high strength passenger safety cell, with deformable crumple zones back and front. There's no escaping the mini hatch's new longer and nose, something necessitated by pedestrian safety regulations. LED taillights offer improved visibility, while full LED headlights and front fog lights are elective too. Naturally, ABS brakes are standard, that are supplemented by electronic brake force distribution to optimize stopping power in emergency situations. Traction control is standard as well as the optional adaptive cruise control using a collision mitigation function that will attempt to stop your Mini being involved using a frontal collision inside the first place. No escaping the Mini's compact dimensions. Good space in advance, less so from the rear. 5-door model adds somewhat accessibility. If you're considering choosing a car such as the Mini because of the carrying capacity then you've misunderstood the vehicle's purpose, and even its name. Naturally probably the most practical choice may be the 5-door model, which joined the range for the end of 2014. It's a 5-seater the 3-door Mini will sit 4 people only which enable it to carry more luggage, too. The three doors boot measures only 211 liters with all the seats up and 731 using them folded down, as the five door model's extra overall length enables 278 liters seats up and 941 seats down. The back doors are short that makes getting in and out quite effort but once you're in legroom is really as good as many small cars and headroom is okay for although the tallest of passengers. Those stubby rear doors will make accessing child seats tricky, though, but at the very least it's easier than inside a three-door version. Although you'll be able to fit three people across the trunk seat bench it's a decent squeeze. Three-door mini hatch has limited practicality. The three-door is often a small car, and it is really designed like a car for singletons and couples, as opposed to as an out-on-doubt small family car. While the main Mini's mantra may have been to improve interior space for your smallest physical dimension, it isn't true on the latest car. However, 
it's done to assume all bad news as even though the mini hatch's power to carry for adults in comfort remains questionable, the additional space liberated inside is good for the vehicle's flexibility. Even though the spine seat is shaped for two within the three-door version, it now splits 60 hours 40 minutes instead of 50 hours 50 minutes. In everyday terms because of this it's now possible make use of the mini like a three-seater and carry wider items than before through from your boot area, such as being a pushchair. If you spec the optional movable boot floor it could be set at two different heights or hinged forwards to relax against the back with the rear seats. In the three-door that makes to get a deep thank the lack of your spare wheel yet still relatively short boot. The Mini isn't an enormous car by any stretch. It's a super Mini and may easily fit into most parking spaces which is great for zipping out and about. The upright windscreen takes somewhat getting used to since it feels quite a long way away at first, but it really is very easy to judge the edges from the car due to the automobile's upright shape. Overall, though, it's also simple to maneuver into tight spaces because of those compact dimensions. The Mini's boot isn't big, especially inside 3 door. However, it's simple to get to and it also is surprisingly deep, which will help fit bulky belongings in. Compare it to your Vauxhall Adams boot, one example is, which can be very narrow and slim. If you go to get a 5-door Mini, then your boot size increases to 278 liters. That's much more in accordance with regular super minis, although around the small side in comparison with newer rivals.